What's good, you warriors? How you feeling? We back in there. Let's do this thing. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. And thank you for continuing to comment and talk with me. I love it. And sharing my video. I'm so appreciative and grateful for your support, guys. You know, as I say, you're the warriors. We're a warrior family. You know, and I feel like this is... Like, we've already had a good year, 2014. That's when we started the YouTube. You know, a year on... My biggest video had 24k watches, 24,000 watches, 25,000, you know, we have 500 subscribers, we're going strong, we're going strong. So I feel like I want to do more videos and more content for you, you know, so I can do more videos that is not just for mainstream and for like other people that are doing searches, but for the subscribers as well and everyone else that wants to join in and talk and see what's going on with the Warriors and the Lionheart and everything like that. So I thought I'll start by talking about my life in video gaming, you know, and where it comes from. Um, my origins in fighting gaming, in gaming comes from fighting games, the FGC, fighting game community. You know, I started playing games in the um, 90s, but I really became a, a pro player or hardcore game player of fighting games in the early 90s, early thousands. You know, um, I used to travel to central London in like 94, 95, 96, and I used to watch a player called Rizza play King of Fighters because he could beat King of Fighters on one credit against Regal. He could beat Regal. And Regal had a 100% damage combo that the computer would do on you every single time. Hard Kick, Genocide Cutter was a 100% damage combo. And Rizza could beat that character, you know. And yeah, that's where it all started from, if I'm being absolutely honest. You know, and like the community that we had back in the day, we were all, we all play fighting games for one reason. Passion. We love fighting games and we were a family. We actually became a family. Everybody knew each other. We shared technology. We shared everything. Like when we were like we used to go to each other's houses for sessions. We used to go to a man called Cobra Commander's house and we'd have like um sessions on tech in there and Street Fight Alpha 2 and Street Fight Alpha 3. I'd go to um Saurian Dash. You all know Saurian Dash. I'd go to Saurian Dash's house and play Soul Calibur and Alpha 2 and third strike soul calibur second impact all those type of games you know and like i'd go to bulletproof we used to go to a guy called bulletproof but i never played fighting games with bulletproof actually it was just to watch wrestling back in the day when the rock was the brahma bull when he wasn't a diva he was the people's champion you know that's how i know all people like soria dash i know soria dash because of street fighter street fighter third strike and soul calibur Everyone says, yeah, I mean, he's a Soul Calibur. He's a Soul Calibur player. He's got a ridiculous, a terrifying um, lizard man. But he is a third strike player. He created the Vortex before the Vortex was the Vortex. His execution was his main weapon. But he had a flow chart and a Vortex that the moment you got hit, not knocked down, hit, it's time to guess. It was time to guess. His abuki was ridiculous. Ridiculous. You know, um, Bulletproof, he was the best UK player there was. Free. I would call him the best player in Europe on King of Fighters. No one came close to him. He had, now when you hear people say stuff like, he created some of the memes and terms using the FGC even today. He was the first charismatic, witty, top player there ever was. He was the first. You know, like the days of Ryan Hart, when Ryan Hart was like the best player through and through of Virtua Fighter, Street Fighter, and Virtua Fighter, Tekken, Virtua Fighter, Tekken, and Street Fighter. Yeah, Ryan's original PlayStation Street Fighter game. Ryan Hart is actually, first of all, a Virtua Fighter player. He's a Virtua Fighter player. Then he was a King of Fighters player. Then he was a Tekken player. You know? Like, he was, a, like, I would see that guy, his dedication was what was, his dedication to hard work was actually mesmerising. It was mesmerising, because he would have one pound, only one pound left, and he spent that one pound, putting it in the arcade machine, tapping both credits on both sides of the arcade cabinet, just to practice a combo. That's how dedicated that man was, you know. But, right, um, 
bulletproof. He was the best. He was actually better than Ryan. He was better than Ryan. It's just that he always used to come to arcade so he didn't couldn't enter the tournaments because he always used to come after work. You play against bulletproof. You probably beat him maybe the first game or the second game, but after that, the first and second game that you won, those are the last games you're winning because after that, he downloaded you and it became free. It was terrifyingly free. That he knows what you're doing to such a degree that you can't even play anymore because he knows what you're going to do before you do it. He had the download. He would download you before they were using the term download. All those terms like blatant, select mans, raggo, what are you saying off the floor, um, one man, all those kind of talk and those terms and memes used at FTC even to this day come from man called Bulletproof. He was the first. Reinhardt knows, Cobra Commander knows, I know, um, RZA knows, the, the, the selected people that were around in the late 90s that were the first people there know that Bulletproof was the best and the first. We know, we know, he was, he was free, he was free, he was free, you know, he was the best. Courage, charismatic, witty, everything. Cobra Commander, the best law in existence. At once, the best Tekken player, no question, no question. For me, it was out of um, Cobra Commander and Starscream, who's the, who was the best um, Tekken player, you know, in my opinion. You know, but Cobra Commander, his law was incredible. He felt the character. He loved that character lore. And that's what made him and drove him to be such an incredible player that he became. You know, same thing like Starscream. He picked Horan because he loved the character. And the character had swag. Switch starts, um, 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 start switching combos. All that kind of stuff. He didn't play the character because he was top tier. Cobra Command didn't play lore because he was top tier. They played because they loved the characters. Some of the technology that you see people do with Lord today comes from Cobra Commander. He created it. You hear the music that's playing in the background. That comes from Cobra Commander. He made that. So he, he performed that song, the song that's playing right now, for Mind Explosion. Yes. Yes. And Starscream, best war ranks. Best player. In the UK or even Europe. At one point it was the best player in Europe. You know, this is when we were young. When we were teenagers in the early thousands. We had all the time in the world to do whatever we wanted. We played nine hours a day. We trained nine hours a day. And we were in the arcades almost 10 to 12 hours every single day. And then when we were finishing the arcade, we'll go to other to our other friends' houses to do sessions. And some days we wouldn't even sleep. That's how hard body we were, how hardcore we were. You grow up. You're not able to have that free time. You know, that's one of the reasons that I quit video gaming. It's because I didn't have any time to do anything other than play games. You know, I wanted to have a house. When I was a young Lionheart, I wanted to have my own house. I wanted to be bigger, stronger. Because I was skinny. I know I ain't skinny now, but I used to be skinny. Now I'm about I'm 80 kilograms. You know, I'm 80 kilograms, you know, I'm always, I, I do go to the gym, I train out, you know, when I'm finished working, um, I've got a bed, I've got a nice TV, you know, I've got a woman, I've got everything that I want, like, I can eat when I want, I can have the consoles that I want, you know, I've got some of the consoles there, you know, I've got the Dreamcast, I've got some of the old consoles, because I'm talking about the old days, you know, so we've got the Dreamcast, we've got the PlayStation, we've got the um, Xbox, the original Xbox there, and we've got the PlayStation up there you know so I can literally buy whatever I want do whatever I want go wherever I want get the things that I want I would not have been able to do that if I was still playing video games the way I used to that's why I, it was hard for me to stop playing video games I, I still play video games but not as much as I used to not as much as I used to and I miss it so much so much I miss it you know but I still play I still play Ultra Street Fighter I still play Tekken I still play various type of games, Hokuto Shinken, you know, um, I play those games but not as much as I do, I play it terribly actually, because I play like maybe three times, maybe three, four times a month, or if even that, on a busy, busy period of my life, I'll basically play a fighting game once every two months, it's bad. But it's life. I'm getting bodied by life. If you want to be successful in life, 
then sometimes you have to put aside the things that you love in terms of passion in order to make money so that you can have that time to indulge in the things that you love if that made any sense you know um there was a player called super s-u-p-a gavin to me um he had really good reads he had really really good reads he could read you he was like i love playing that guy i used to love playing that guy i used to play him on third strike and king of fighters you know when i play king of fighters i play new face team shermi yashiro chris of those of you that know about king of fighters and i say yashiro shermi chris you know what it's about bitch it's mine huh? <laughs> yeah it's a sorry it's a joke but yeah you know so i used to love playing those teams and love playing king of fighters and what kind of stuff you know i used to play saw sorry and dash you know on um I played Cervantes on Soul Calibur, you know, I was kind of cheap, you know, but he played um, Lizardman and that character's equally as cheap, so, you know, we were even. But yeah, you know, that's where, like, my passion for fighting games come from and stuff like that, you know, like, back in the day, it's like, we, we were motivated by passion, we were a family, you know, as I said before, you know, we shared technology, we never hid technology, because we all knew that in order to get better, we have to share like a gimmick, I could say a gimmick, like let's say in Tekken, right? Nina. Up up for free. Up for free. Up forward. Up forward. Four three four. Right? Now, people will get used to get hit by that all the time. Yeah? Now, maybe you win with it. Now, the way you beat it is just hold down back. You could duck all of it and then punish her free. You lose 80 um, 60. 30 40 percent for no reason because you're spamming a move that's easy to block but if you don't know how to block it you'll get caught in it all the time you know back in the day you will tell people yeah just hold down back she ducks up you can duck all of it yeah because <gasps> we shared stuff we didn't hide technology we never were secretive we weren't disrespectful to each other. We were literally a family. The, the Street Fighter side, the Marvel side, the King of Fighters side, the Guilty Gear side, the Tekken side, the Virtual Fighter side. All sides of the community were a family. We all knew each other. We were all friendly with each other. I kind of feel like now the FGC in the UK isn't like that. They're all hateful and don't... Um, help each other and manipulative and deceitful and just disrespectful towards one another that's why the community isn't growing like it should be you know because the to be truth of the community in the uk should be bigger than what it is you know um bulletproof has got um, an arcade in um london called heart of gaming you know really really good arcade if your uk player should be supporting that you play online and i played a lot of good players online like there's a lot of derpy players and not really good players online but there's quite a few good players online you know should go to heart of gaming the really really good arcade that people go to you know there's a organization called unveiled media that's run by mark and richard them Dentons, you know, they're my friends as well. I've known those guys for almost 20 years as well. You know, I used to remember, I think it was Richard I used to play on Marvel vs. Capcom 2. You know, I used to beat that guy all the time on Marvel. I don't know if I actually think he ever beat me once. Well, actually, I think he did actually. He beat me like once or twice when I was retired. You know, once or twice he beat me when I was retired from that game. You know, so I'm happy for him that he managed to get that win and stuff like that. I'm only joking. Well, I'm not joking because it is true, but I'm only teasing. You know, but they have a company called Unveiled Media. You know, that should be being supported. Everyone in the FGC, in the UK FGC, and everywhere should be supporting those guys because if we don't, if you don't band together to make things better and bigger, it will be separated. United, united, you grow. Divided, you fall. You know. And if this was back in the day, we had these kind of resources back in the day, 
then it would be bigger than what it was because we were a family back in the day. You know what I mean? We loved each other. We always had a laugh. We were always challenging. We were always sharing technology, going to each other's houses. We were never disrespectful towards one another. You know, all those people like Bulletproof, Ryan Hart, Cobra Commander, Starscream, they know it. They know it. You know, um, Ray Han, Ray Han the Chef. You know who started that name, Ray Han the Chef? That was me. That was me. When I said, I used, I used to always used to say to him, Ray Han the Stupid Chef. Because he was always cooking up some marvellous shit to make your mouth water. Because he, every time he would go, this is like the X-Men, X-Men Street Fighter days. Yeah, he always used to come back with a new infinite or a new combo, you know. So I was like, what, is, what have you got now? What have you got? Well, not Ray Han. I never because that's his name. But the, the chef. You know, I used to call him the stupid chef, yeah. Um, because he's always smiling, he always has a grin on his face. When he's winning, he's smiling. When he's losing, he's smiling, you know. But he was cool, man. He was cool, you know. So that's where, that's where the word the chef come from. Always cooking up some marvellous shit to make your mouth water. He'd always come up with something new. You know, this was like back in the day, you know. Um, Van Damme, Lopez, you know, he's the one... He's the one that made this masterpiece for me. That's my engineer, Lopez, Van Dam, Cobra Commander, you know who he is. My Bayonetta and Dante stick. And it's a dream, this is my Dreamcast stick. This is how old this stick is. It's a modded Dreamcast stick. You know? So yeah, that's my origin in like fighting games and stuff like that, you know? Like these, like I've got some of the best friends, you know? That are with me to this day, you know, because of like video gaming and fighting games. You know, my best friend, you know, that's like my brother, B Wiz. He's got a YouTube, by the way, you should check it out. It's a really cool YouTube. He does reviews, he talks about uh, music, he talks about gaming, he talks about everything. Reviewing, he's got a YouTube, you check it out. He's subscribed on my thing, so you should go to my subscribe list, you'll be able to find him. He's really, really cool. Um, you know, He's my best friend, I met him through Death May Cry. I mean, we're not talking about console gaming yet, we're just talking about the arcade and my origins, but just to describe where I know some of these people from. Um, B Wiz, that's like my best friend in the world, I know him because of Death May Cry. We both loved Death May Cry, then from there we found that we had a lot more things in common. We started going to each other's houses, we started talking about different kind of stuff, and that's how he's my best friend. Fabian, um, Leo Gammy. You know, that's like my brother right there, I love that guy, you know what I mean, he needs everything to me. I met him through video gaming because we used to play games like No Mercy and Smackdown wrestling games. You know, um, on Nintendo 64 and on the PlayStation and the PlayStation 2, that's how I met that guy. You know, Power Stone, I used to play him on Power Stone, all those type of games, that's why I know. You know, some of the best friends that are like my friends for life, my comrades, my Nakama. You know, so yeah, you know, that's how I wanted to just talk about my little gaming life and why I play gaming, why it means so much to me. Like a lot of life stories and things in life, I learned from video gaming. Sayings, I learned from video gaming. You know, I actually got my house. I actually have my own house. You know, I don't live at home. You know, I got my own TV, my own bed. You know, everything is mine. Everything is mine. I own everything. You know, it's because of gaming. You know, when I had nothing, I wrote a story, a plan of my life and how I was going to achieve everything. Because I used to play games like Metal Gear and Final Fantasy. People told me I was, an, I was a dreamer, I was a joker. It's video game, it's not serious. I've got a house now. I've got everything I want in life, whatever I want. I can afford it, I can, afford it, I can buy it. Come from gaming. People that told me I was a dreamer, I wasn't going to achieve nothing. They're the ones that are either in prison, dead single or homeless I'm neither of those I've got a woman I've got a bed I've got a house I've got a big screen TV I've got a job I've got consoles I've got everything I want so if I'm a dreamer or I'm a geek or I'm a nerd I'm still achieving and I'm still being cool doing it so I will say don't let everybody, anybody tell you you can't or you're not cool enough or you're not good enough because keep on following your own path 
and you'll be able to do whatever you want. No one could define you but yourself. That's what I truly believe. You know, you have to believe that you're better and know you're better and strive to be better. Because your part, your choice is the right choice. So yeah. So it's a bit all philosophical and stuff like that. You know, I mean, let's dead that right there. So yeah, I just wanted to talk about that and let you guys into my life and my way of thinking. And I would love to hear your stories. I would love to hear your stories and we can talk more and everything like that. You know, um, there's a player, there's another guy that I want to mention, uh, Sino. You know, there's another guy that I met recently and then we find that we had so many ties in life, we just never knew each other. This is someone I, re I met recently, 2000, last year, you know, and I realised that he knows everyone that I know. His uh, history in gaming is similar to mine, you know, so you see that really the world, is the community makes the world a small place. So let's be a community, let's be a family warriors and just do this thing and be united, share our stories. So I'm interested to hearing you guys. I believe in you, I hope you guys believe in me. Let's do this thing, let's become bigger, a bigger family and we can take the world on. We can take the world on together. You know what I'm saying? Okay Warriors, thanks for watching. Sorry for talking your, your, talking your ears off. Please keep subscribing. Please keep supporting and commenting and give me the thumbs up and I'll keep doing this thing and we'll get bigger, bigger and better. Okay guys, take care.